Ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Beer Group, my name is Markus Dahlaus and I am the managing director of the Beer Group. I would like to warmly welcome you to the third Beer Online Info Forum from our company headquarters in Solingen. As in 2020 and 2021, we have news to report from the Beer Group and we have chosen the format the well-proven format of the BR Online Forum to present it to you. We hope that the next 45 minutes will be interesting and entertaining for you because it will be a mixture of video contributions. It will also be some discussions as well as news. For this purpose, this uh, program will give to you an overview about the path to the chromium 6-free uh, plastic electroplating as well as new beer technologies and products. We will look forward to your questions to our program and to send your questions into our studio is very easy. Just follow the tutorial. So let me shortly introduce you to our today's program. First of all, our Head of Development and Process Technology, Dr. Felix Heinzler, informs about the status of chromium 6 free plating of plastics. We will also learn, in this case, about the technologies to recover uh, raw material and recycle uh, resources in the process. After that, Dr. Markus Hepp, BIA's Technology Manager Automotive will report about the recycling of plastic material. We want to deepen these topics in a short discussion before Jörg Puttbach, the owner of the BIA Group, opens the second part of the Info Forum with a news blog. Please think about your question, which we will then discuss in our uh, news blog. Good morning. I will show you in the following minutes some topics regarding plating on plastics uh, in terms of future technologies, which will show you our newest developments. We have installed a new plating line here in Solingen. This is, uh, let's say, state-of-the-art plating line and a flagship project of the Ministry of Environment here in Germany. Um, the plating line is um, specially constructed regarding energy efficiency and, of course, a complete hex chrome free process. So we are able not only to implement the final um, layer system by trivalent chrome, but we are also able to um, qualify uh, hex chrome free pretreatment pre processes in the following weeks. We have started these processes already and we will have a closer look in, at the production in the next minutes. Um, our next uh, topic is in the uh, plating line in Slovakia, where we already have implemented uh, the plating for polyamides. And even for these processes, we are now able to qualify uh, hex chrome free pretreatment. Some major topics regarding the construction of the new plating line concerning the efficiency are mentioned here. We have the anodes for the trivalent chrome as a main topic regarding the um, containment of iridium in the um, anodes. So we are implementing new technologies here that are able to, well, which are able to reduce the content of iridium in the anodes. And in the BR2, the new plating line, the first set of anodes um, with reduced iridium content are in serious production. Um, the next topic is again the uh, energy efficiency. We installed an energy management system which will enable us to um, compare these processes and make a benchmark between different electrolytes and hardware within the following weeks. Circularity is a topic we mentioned within the last several um, BR online forums um, regarding the um, circularity of our plastic components. In the plating line, we will implement several technologies that enable us to reuse uh, the water and, of course, the electrolyte contents. Um, the first step is the integration of a palladium recovery 
which is now in serious production. At the moment we are implementing a recovery of our nickel contents in the rinses, which will enable us to more or less recover the complete nickel that is dragged out into the rinses. Um, a prototyping system for the recovery of the trivalent chrome electrolytes will be installed within the next years. This is a three-year um, funding project, project uh, where we cooperate with the University of Birmingham and Cologne um, regarding uh, reverse osmosis systems to have an efficient process to recover the trivalent chrome from the rinses. As already mentioned, we are not working on these topics completely on our own, but with several partners and cooperations. The first is the Intelvat project, which stands for Intelligent Water Treatment Technologies. This is a EU-funded project in cooperation with the University of Birmingham and Cologne. The second one is a special program for circular economy of the state office in North Rhine-Westphalia in cooperation with the Effizienzagentur. We have implemented the palladium recovery here in Solingen. And the last and major topic is the Umweltinnovationsprogramm from the Federal Ministry for, for Environment in Germany. This is the funding for the complete new plating line we have installed here in Solingen regarding the efficiency and the environmental impact for the plating process as a whole system. So now we'll have a closer look at these topics in our production. We are actually in the basement of our production facility. Here we have the uh, wastewater treatment and the recovery of the electrolyte contents from the different rinses. So with the new construction of the um, plating line, we also set up the um, wastewater treatment to state-of-the-art technology. Um, as an example, we have the palladium recovery and the nickel recovery also situated here. One in qualification, the other one already um, in collaboration with the serious production. So the palladium recovery contains some um, treatment of the rinses itself and then we have an iron exchange process that takes the palladium out of the rinses and makes it usable for further processing. Um, this is more or less the same technology we are also using with a, a nickel recovery. This is the actual plant we are using for the recovery of the nickel content from our rinses. Um, the technology is set up in cooperation with McDermott and Tone and Vio. And in this case, we also um, make a pretreatment of our rinses and then we um, use ion exchangers to take out the different nickel ions, like we have here in this case. The reverse osmosis system for the Intelvat project for the treatment of the trivalent chrome rinses will be installed within the next year. It is actually in construction and validation. So this will be a topic we can have a look at in close up in the following years. Now we are in the middle of our production line, the new so-called BR2 here situated in Soling. As already mentioned, is a completely new constructed plating on plastics automotive industry uh, plating line. So we are able to um, set up interior as well as exterior layer systems and the different nickel technologies to match the um, different surface appearances of the OEMs. Um, the plating line is directly uh, installed with trivalent chrome systems. We have no um, layer system containing uh, hexavalent chrome, so we are directly qualifi uh, qualifying and implementing the new technologies for future um, on the layer system with trivalent chrome as finish. Um, at the uh, right side of me, there's a complete line just for the qualification of the hexavalent chrome-free pretreatment processes. So we are able to benchmark and qualify different approaches. For example, a manganese edge compared with swelling processes and ultrasonic rinses at different um, steps. And so we will be able to um, see in the next following month which parts and processes are needed to match the um, 
specifications and to be able to meet the same specifics for the part at the moment in hexavalent chrome treatment and now with the chrome free treatment processes. I hope I was able to show you some small spotlights on the new technologies we are implementing to make plating on plastic a future technology for automotive applications. Um, we are very active in circularity and efficiency and the general purpose of yeah, uh, plated surfaces for high quality in automotive applications will be uh, matched to high efficiency in the production processes. In environmental impacts, we will focus on recovery of our electrolytes. We have uh, the topics of the substances of very high concern also addressed in this production line. And this not only in a bypass system, but in full production size. So we will be able to qualify this process within the following weeks and months and get back to you about the qualification of your parts. Dear ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the development of the total hex chrome free processes are making a big progress. Uh, the same with the resources saving new electroplating processes. And I hope next year our BR2 will be able to produce the first parts in serious production without any hexavalent chrome. But here we are still looking for the support of the automotive companies because we have learned from where during the switch from hexavalent chromium electroplating process to the trivalent chromium electroplating process that qualification scenarios are really high hurdles for us to take and uh, we need the support of the final customers to introduce the new technologies. So, you could see the processes at BIA are constantly being optimized and measured against the group's environmental goals. But what about the plastic material? Last year we talked about recycling chrome-plated plastic components and Markus Hepp reported about the first trials. What is the progress on this topic and uh, where are we today? So, Let's Markus do his report. Real metal surfaces emphasizes the high quality design of vehicles, both in the interior and exterior. Those surfaces have a lasting value and are, are after the use phase fully recyclable. The challenge will be to avoid that in the future vehicles and their individual components don't end up in the scrap yard at the end of their lifetime. There is no systematic return and disintegration of vehicles and recycling of their individual components. Not yet, because various automotive manufacturers are already working on concepts and infrastructures for the return of vehicles and the recycling of the component. Our components have a significant sustainability advantage in this system due to their complete recyclability. Yeah, welcome you all, to you all and I hope you're doing all fine. Um, also, the beer group wants to close the circle. So, our, uh, nowadays our linear model, model, which is based on economics, uh, functionality, aesthetics and, and safety, we um, extended it. Um, let me emphasize uh, the, the aspect that um, we also have to try to change our business model. So we are going to um, take back our material, our, um, after the, the end use phase, we are taking back our uh, yeah, plated parts uh, to, yeah, to, to recycle them. So this is our main focus. Um, what you should know, we take back our parts. So, and um, yeah, for us, uh, the process is ready to start. So the recycling process is ready to start just to, to let you know what we um, did in 2021 um, to get you an impression uh, that we have also uh, make some improvements in 2022. So we started in 2021 with the recycling process and um, unfortunately we got still some impurities in the material. So, and, and in the end you, you can see or you can recognize these impurities, um, you, you get spotting uh, sp uh, spots and, 
and pittings on, on the surface. So you can see it here. So the purity of the raw material was quite good. Uh, we uh, achieved above 99% of, of raw material quality, but it wasn't good enough to get a proper surface. So in 2022, so this year, we made some improvements and you see it on the left side. This is pure virgin ABS material uh, with no recycling content on it. And um, the other plates, you have 10% recycled material in it, 20%, um, 50% and at least 100% uh, recycling material. You can see it on the color, but what you also can see on that surfaces is you do not have any impurities. So the plating quality is quite nice and we don't see any difference uh, between uh, a uh, yeah, pure ABS virgin material and a 100% recycled material from that point of view. So the process is finished, the recycling process is finished, but I was often asked in the past, um, um, yeah, do you have a mass production um, applicable process? And I would like to take you with me um, to show you the process, um, how it is done in, yeah, in our facilities or in the facilities of our, of our um, yeah, partners. So let's join the excursion. We start at first our, our journey in the south of North, North Rhine-Westphalia. Here is the managing director of the Energenta GmbH, um, Mr. Möhring. He shows me around um, where the um, yeah, parts are delivered, all crumpled parts are delivered. Um, so from here the parts are stored in an intermediate depot and from that depot the material is taken and first of all roughly crushed and stored in silos. And from these silos, you can see it here, um, the actual separation process begins. There are several crushing stages which um, the material is crushed several times. During this shredding process, the metal layers then burst off the plastic so that both fractions can be collected separately in big packs. And um, yeah, here you can see the plastic fraction and in another big pack, you can see the metal fraction. So to summarize, you can see here the next picture. You can see on the left the um, silo capable material after the first crushing. And then you can see the plastic fraction in the middle. And on the right side, you can see the metal fraction. But we aren't ready yet. We continue our journey to Sysplus GmbH near Nuremberg. Um, the shredded plastic fraction is compounded here. The delivered material is first analyzed for its properties and for this purpose um, a representative sample is taken from each delivery batch. Um, injection molding tests are carried out and the test specimens are produced. The properties of the delivered materials are defined on the basis of these test specimens. Among other things, a, uh, yeah, what you can see here, a notched impact strength test is carried out. Based on these results, it's determined which additives has to be added in order to um, obtain a finished material at the end of the compounding, which corresponds um, to virgin ABS without any recycling content. Here's the managing director of SysPlus GmbH. Um, Mr. Dobberke shows me how such a recipe is then set up in the system. The rest takes care of itself. The individual components are fed automatically into the compounding plant. The finished material is then cooled in strands, cut into pieces and dried. Finally, the properties of the component material are checked again and the goods are ready for use. Okay, welcome back. Um, Hope you can, now you're convinced that the process is reliable and it is um, yeah, ready for mass production. But I don't want to let you go without a preview what we would like to do in 2023 next year. So we would like, of course, to continue the material qualifications with the OEMs to get the approval that we are able to or allowed to um, um, implement these recycling materials in our production lines. Um, we also want to yeah, set up the first um, mass production trials or mass production parts with, with that technology. 
and uh, we looked and we are going to look into the um, yeah, options that we can um, integrate this in our BR technologies, um, the ambient light technology and the touch technology, which are very important for us that everything fits together. So I can, what you can see on that picture here is um, we um, integrated the ambient light technology, also the touch technology on these plates and um, we recognized of course um, based on the on the different color of the of the raw material what, what depends on how much recycled material um, put we in in that in that plate um, then you you recognize a different color which is uh, the the higher the recycling material is the more yellowish um, the the final color is but and this is of course an issue of the recycled material but you can compensate this by using special LED technology. Have a look on this. So the yellow color disappeared by using special LED, LED technology and therefore we are convinced that also our ambient light technology and also our touch technology um, is compatible with the recycling process. So that's it, process is finished. Um, it is finished for post-industrial um, material. For post-consumer material, as you, you know, we mentioned in the beginning and we mention it always, um, we take back or we would like to take back our plated parts after the end use phase. So um, to, to ensure that, that we have a proper process, a proper circular process, um, we are starting a, a project um, to, to get the post-consumer circle um, yeah, to close it. So that's it for today. If you have any more questions on that, then you can um, yeah, contact us at the forum and, and send your questions and we will answer it yeah, in our live session. Welcome back to our studio where I would like to start the discussion round, the first discussion round. To my left is Dr. Markus Hepp. Hello. Welcome. On my right is Dr. Felix Heinzler. Welcome, Felix. Hello, Markus. Um, I have a question to you, Felix, to begin this discussion round. BIA has been supplying Chrome 3 components since 2014. How well are the Chrome 3 processes integrated in BIA's production? And uh, are there still any technical tasks on these pro uh, processes? Uh, well, as we have integrated the driver in Chrome at every facility we have in the BR group and every facility is in serious production, the general process is qualified and well going. Uh, of course, there are several technical topics we need to address in the following, let's say, years. Uh, one is the wastewater treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, for every facility, we have different demands for the local processes and the requirements of the government and further usage of the water. Um, for the VR side, we are going for a UV treatment that guarantees a complete, let's say, um, complexing agent-free and um, metal-free water that can be used for several different applications. Um, the next step will be the Intelvat project, mm -hmm. where we will integrate in Solingen a recovery reverse osmosis system to, let's say, separate the water and the electrolyte content and to be able to circulate it into our processes again. So this will be the topics for the following month and we will start in Solingen in 2023. So technology-wise, we are clear with most of the, uh, the topics and, and there is no issue to integrate it uh, into all plating lines or to, to do all products with the travel and chrome. So Markus, then a question to you. Yeah. Why don't we have 100% of our production today with travel and chrome? What are the real hurdles to introduce travel and chrome to all uh, customers? Um, yeah, we are faced with, let's say, two major challenges. The first challenge is uh, the, the bureaucracy in the yeah, entire supply chain um, for the automotive industry because um, everything takes very long time to, to set up the documentation and, and to do everything that, that everyone can, can yeah, set 
in the data in, in the, the common databases. Um, so, and the second one is um, we, we are uh, faced with or we are confronted with um, new specification or mm -hmm. extended specifications. So, um, there are more testing to do and um, the, sometimes the cycle times extended also. So, it takes a very long time um, to pass all these tests or to do all these tests and the capacity, capacity of, of testing chambers, for example, are, are quite limited these mm -hmm. days. So, um, yeah, th these are the major reasons why, why um, things happen very long. Um, we, we would like to, to shorten this um, mm -hmm. because um, our proposal is to, yeah, to select different kind of, or to, to get a representative um, amount of, of parts, of representative parts um, that every yeah, geometry, for example, is, is covered by these parts and then to get a process approval. And if the process is approved, then um, other articles or other parts are covered by that process approval so mm -hmm. that we can set up then a, a uh, in our um, serial um, accommodation, or, no, um, <clears throat> in our serial testing that we can yeah, mm -hmm. uh, pff, achieve everything yeah. of the necessary the, testing. The, the color of the travel and chrome finish is exactly the same like hexavalent chrome so you don't see the difference anymore and we can now uh, um, also assemble uh, hexavalent to trivalent this is not a question anymore if, if you look very precise on these parts maybe um, the the absolute professional ca or the experts in in yeah surface technologies it see such mm. a difference see a little difference but usually in the end user um, he won't recognize um, an, a, a big difference between these parts. So mm -hmm. the appearance is quite the same and, okay. and therefore a, a mixture is, is, yeah, it is only temporarily because um, on one day we have changed everything um, to, to Chromium 3 and then pff, there is mm -hmm. no, um, yeah, difference anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move to the pretreatment. So Felix, you were very optimistic, and uh, so when will we have the first uh, parts from the BR2? And uh, what is the, the time schedule for qualifying uh, the parts? Uh, and also, what, is, what about the polyamide? Um, let's pick up polyamide first. Um, we have integrated it into our production line in uh, Nitra in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. The first tests have been very promising and we are actually doing the qualification tests and um, will have to do some minor changes in the process to be more efficient to uh, get, let's say, stable results. But at the end, we will do the qualification and go to our customers within the next, let's say, weeks or month to um, talk about parts and talk about changing this process in serious production. Um, for the BR2 and the ABS chrome-free pretreatment, mm -hmm. we have so far not done the step to completely serious production or qualification. We will do this within the next two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the project BR2 um, is, or the main focus is to be able to directly integrate the chrome-free pretreatment in serious production scale. Um, we will be able to do this in the next two to three weeks. Then we will directly go into qualification processes. So we have a portfolio of different parts ready that will be integrated, tested, and then we will go to our customer in the supply chain to talk about also changing these processes directly ongoing um, mm -hmm. to completely chrome free or chrome six free pretreatment and the surface to travel and chrome as well. Okay, so let's go to the plastic material, Markus. The, the galvanized plastic, to recycle galvanized plastic, mm -hmm. is, a, is a step which is totally out of scope or was totally out of scope in the past. Yep. Uh, so uh, we weren't even allowed to, to reuse the, the, uh, the, yeah, the just injected part. So how can you make sure that the plastic material which is collected and then cleaned and so on, is not inferior material, but is really fulfilling the demands? Um, yeah, for the um, post-consumer material, mm -hmm. 
this is not so easy right now because, as you mentioned, everything is designed, um, with the not, not circular designed. Mm -hmm. So dismantling and so on, and it is not so easy to get um, the pure chrome plated parts back. Um, to recycle them. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we started um, with our process. Uh, we started with the post-industrial material because then we can ensure that that it is yeah more or less um, the the same quality mm -hmm. um, and to prove everyone that we can recycle our um, material and that we are prepared for a circular design and then we can use later on the post-consumer material when the design changed to um, a circular economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it seems that there is a lot of things to do in the, not only in the supply chain, but also in the collection chain right, for the right, material. Right, yeah? everyone has to know that we can take back our parts that, because yeah. we are able to recycle them. Um, and, and when this process starts, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the designer will change their strategy or they mm -hmm. are changing it right now um, in, in other um, yeah, um, applica apl applications. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> they will change and uh, then if, if um, normal car shops after an accident, if, if they are, um, can d um, dismantle these mm -hmm. chrome plated parts, we can take them back and after the end use phase, um, we can also take them back when they are dismantled from, from other plastic components. Okay, so thank you for this short discussion here. Uh, at this point I would like to remind you to send your questions into uh, the studio and uh, yeah, we will be able to discuss these questions after the next topic and the next topic will be the news from the BR group and this is done by Jörg Püttbach. Dear ladies and gentlemen, in addition to the exciting topics about a chrome-free future and the 100% recycling of beer components, there is more to report from the beer group. Here they are, the beer news. Automation is progressing. Loading robots, automated laser systems, driverless transport systems and much more. BIA has always been working on increasing the degree of automation in production. Another system for automatic punching was just handed over to the series. Also, BIA is making great pro progress in camera-assisted surface inspection. The aim of all automation is to improve both efficiency and quality. BIA is a finalist in the Besser Lackieren Award 2022. As a newcomer, Bia made it straight into the finalist of the Besser Lackieren Award. With a new, highly efficient and flexible paint shop, Bia hopes to be able to win in the final against highly specialized painting companies and big OEM as BMW. Test Laboratory in Solingen accredited. B-Lab is the name of the BIA test laboratory accredited by the German organization DAKKS. As an independent laboratory, the B-Lab can carry out all the essential tests requested by the customer on chrome-plated components. This can reduce qualification times significantly. The B-Lab is also open for testing your components. Please check the BIA website. BIA Mexico close to IRTF certification. The new BIA plant in San Luis Potosi has successfully completed the stage two audit. In the next few weeks, some minors will be corrected. The IITF cert certificate is then expected at the end of this year. Wuxi BIA. The BIA joint venture in Wuxi, China is broadening its customer base. In addition to numerous components for Audi, Daimler and Volkswagen, more and more Asian OEM have been convinced by BIA quality. Wuxi BIA is manufacturing components from BYD, Great Wall, FAW, Toyota and Nissan. Touch Chrome improved. The BIA Touch Chrome was already presented 2021. 
the BR developers have now significantly improved the touch sensitivity. Fully metallized surfaces can now be combined with functions without limits. In connection with the BR Night Design and BR Texture Chrome, this offers a wide range of design options for control elements. BR relies on solar energy. To achieve the sustainability goals, the BR Group relies on solar energy. While in Solingen, an output of almost one megawatt peak will be achieved with the installation of two more photovoltaic systems, BIA is right now building up a system on the Mexican plant site in San Luis Potosí that will generate almost twice as much electricity, thanks to the sun in Mexico. At the Slovakian plant site in Nitra, a system with more than one megawatt peak is currently planned. On the one hand, the green electricity will reduce the exploding electricity costs. On the other hand, it is an important contribution to the zero calm strategy of BIA. That were the BIA news. Back to Marcos. Yeah, just in the news, now he's here. Jörg, welcome to our discussion round. Hello. Hello, Jörg. Uh, Jörg is the managing director of the BIA group and uh, he will be yeah, here also to answer some strategic questions. So my first question directly to Jörg. The news referred to the goals of the BIA group and important are the environmental goals which we have in our group. But we all know environmental goals, they need also a lot of investments, uh, investments in the technology. but. Uh, in those days of, yeah, let's say, not so good economic uh, situations, uh, how, yeah, how do you think, uh, does it make sense to invest the money into, into the environmental goals? Yeah, it's very nice to say in not so good economic uh, times. Yeah? Uh, of course, it's a hard time at the moment. But as you know, uh, Markus Bia is a family-owned company. And as such, we are following long a long-term strategy. And this strategy is crystal clear. Mm -hmm. First is we want to ban all substances of very high concern like chromium-6. Second is we want to have a carbon-free production in the future. And the third, also very important, is that we want to support our customer, the OEM, to build a yeah, a cradle-to-cradle -cradle car to build a car that is made by 100% recycled parts. Mm. And our technology um, is, is very uh, suitable for that demands because we can follow these three points of our strategy with our technology very well. And so it's, it makes sense to invest the money because we think we will have a success with this kind of strategy and with, the, with these goals in the future. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, I received a few questions from uh, our uh, yeah, uh, friends outside of the studio. And one is quite interesting. Uh, I think it's for Markus. Uh, yeah. What is the degree of, uh, um, um, yeah, of the uh, uh, material which we receive from recycling? Is there still metal in the, in the plastic and how much metal is in the plastic and especially uh, how much palladium is in the plastic material? Um, so first of all, um, the degree or we, we increase the degree of purity um, from last year to this year. So, um, but it's hard to say um, how much impurities are remaining in that material. You, mm. see, you see very small spots on, on this material but um, it has no influence on the, um, yeah, on the, on the aesthetics and op on the optics of, of such a material. Because what we are looking for is um, the, the most sensitive um, process is the electroplating process. So mm -hmm. any deficiency, you see it directly yeah, you, in the final in inspection. So um, therefore, if, if the quality is, is high enough on that, um, then you can you can use it for um, yeah the electroplating process and uh, the physical properties are, are mm. quite the same than virgin material what we have so um, you can't do it in figure but we are close to 100 percent 
I okay. would say. So palladium is not in the, in the plastic anymore? Palladium <laughs> might be there, but um, the palladium, even on, on um, yeah, fresh electroplated parts, is, yeah. is only, um, let's say, 10 milligram per square meter um, surface. So you, you can't recognize it, you can't okay. measure it. Mm. So the, the impurities remain in that plastic, okay. may remain in that yeah, plastic. Yeah. So palladium doesn't play any mm. role in the recycling process. So there is another question for you, uh, uh, Felix. Uh, one customer wants to know uh, how long we already have installed our recycling technologies in the wastewater treatment and uh, do we already have results? Does it make sense? Maybe it's also a customer from our supplier who wants to know if the investment is okay. <laughs> um, for the palladium recovery, we have now the first batch uh, ready to have a closer look uh, how many palladium we were able to uh, take out of the rinses. First calculations assume that we are above 95 percentage of the drag out we have from the um, activator. Mm. So it will be, depending on the palladium price, uh, some thousand euros that we are able to recover and of course reuse this material um, for the nickel uh, recovery. We have just started the qualification and have so far no direct benchmark. But for the last several years, we already uh, were able to recover some of our nickel rinses and know for sure that this is um, not only an environmental impact, but also an economically uh, um, good process. Um, the ra last part about the um, project for the trivalent chrome. We will benchmark it in the following uh, month when the production plant is installed. This will happen in 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one question to, to you, Jörg, I think it's, it's uh, is energy, saving of energy, the question of the boss or is it the question of, of all people? Um, it wasn't a question for the boss, uh, let's say some years ago. But in, in the last time, especially in the last year, it has become so relevant, um, especially from the costs, mm -hmm. uh, that of course it is, a, it is something what, a, what the general manager has to take care. Uh, but of course it's also something that is um, uh, for everybody in the company, because saving energy is a, is a goal of, of our company and we have to bring it into the heads of everybody, otherwise we will not succeed. One question which came to me just in this moment. Has BR done any work on plating on other materials than ABS, PC, ABS or PA? I think from our point of view, the material properties of PC, ABS and polyamide are required for the applications in automotive business. Uh, for example, polypropylene or high-filled polypropylene would be another example that could be plated, but the, the process and the material properties for applications with, let's say, high temperatures is not so applicable. Uh, the polypropylene is more focused on uh, substances like perfumes, uh, and this is not our core business. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, but it depends on the application. Um, and so far we have no application where popular populin would be usable. Okay, I, I think uh, in the past we had already a discussion, you, Markus, mentioned the, the good thing to recycle chrome-plated parts is it's only ABS. Yeah, and it's pure <laughs> ABS and high-quality ABS. And, and for example, yeah, polypropylene, you, you can, you, you have a wider range of, of quality material. So. Um, I'm not quite sure if it is recyclable in combination with um, plated parts. Mm. Okay. Uh, then a question to, to Jörg. Uh, how does the BRWay fit into the FGK, the, the uh, um, yeah, Verband, uh, Fachverband Galvanisierte Kunststoffe strategy, strategy? Yeah. Yeah, the FGK represents the, yeah, the German uh, uh, platers on plastics, POP companies, and of course our strategy is not a strategy especially, especially for BI, it is, it is a strategy for our technology. And so it's not only for, for our company, it's, it's for the whole branch. 
because we think we have a lot of our technology has a lot of advantages to other uh, technologies. For example, when we compare the plating to the painting, um, we, our parts can be uh, recycled 100%. We have heard about that. If you have a painted part, you cannot do that. You cannot uh, separate the painting from the plastic. You can, yeah, even you can you can burn it or, or, or use the energy that is inside. But that is a real downcycling. And uh, on the other side, painting is also responsible for microplastics, what is even a big issue. And uh, um, with the plating, with the mm -hmm. metals, you, you do not have all these problems. Mm. OK. So I think that has been all questions from our audience. Don't worry if you couldn't send your questions or you forgot. Oh, there's. Just new questions coming. The first question is for the palladium recovery. So the palladium recovery unit, is it uh, constructed in a way that we can directly reuse the palladium in our tank? <laughs> this would be very nice, but um, actually we have to uh, destroy the um, palladium complex to be able to recover it. And mm -hmm. so we uh, cannot directly reuse the palladium in our processes. We have to regain it from the ion exchange system, um, rework it, and then we can use it again as an activator. So we need to do a small circle, but at the end it's very much better to be able to um, gain these uh, small amounts from the rinses than just to be able to just um, put it into the sewers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I hope the, the other uh, recycling technologies directly uh, do a reuse in, inside of the production line, like the uh, reverse osmosis. That absolutely, is, for yeah. travel and chrome and the nickel systems, we are absolutely confident that we will directly be able to recycle the drag out into the rinses and use it into uh, the mm -hmm. electrolytes as well as the water content. So if we just separate it, we can use the water in the rinses and use the electrolyte so contents in the plating. Perfect closed loop. Perfect closed loop. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that have been the, the questions uh, from the uh, yeah, viewers of our uh, BIA online forum. Uh, I think uh, it was interesting for everybody we had uh, fun entertaining you, and uh, I hope you also uh, have had a little bit fun uh, watching our BIA Info Online Forum. Um, this, this has been the third. Maybe we will do a fourth next year. I hope everybody here <laughs> uh, wants to do it. And uh, see you again. Tschüss and bye-bye. <laughs>